Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you how to remove your cam trays and your timing chains on an N54 powered E90 BMW. If you guys haven't tuned in recently, I've already done my rod bearings. I'm doing my oil pan gasket and the timing chains and guides. But in this video, we're going to focus on removing the cam trays to deal with the ceiling rings. I'm taking a 22 mil and putting it on the crank. We're going to rotate the engine. So now that I've rotated it, if you look at the top of the camshafts, you'll see what looks like QR codes on both cams facing up. So we're ready to insert the lock tool. Both the QR codes facing up indicates that the engine is now at TDC cylinder one compression stroke. Bringing over my cam locker tool. So I talked about this in my first video. I don't have a standard flywheel anymore. I have a single mass lightweight, so I don't have the locking pin anymore. So I'm gonna be using a tool to lock the crankshaft. We'll go underneath the car now and I'll show you that. Okay, so you'll have to take my word for it, but the factory lock pin goes on the block just above that little lip there. There's a plastic piece that's in there. Normally you pull it out and you insert the locking tool that comes with that cam locker. Since I'm not running that anymore, I have to lock from here and then I'll be marking the flywheel against the transmission. And just as an FYI, um, I'm using a different lens right now, something that doesn't necessarily focus on one point. It shows you more of the overall area because I know some of you guys like that and it seems more appropriate in this video. So hopefully that's pretty obvious, but I have the flywheel locked up with that tool. So there's no way it will move. That's another way you can go about it. Technically, you're supposed to install a tool like this when you're removing the front crank hub bolt because it's so tight that using the lock pin alone could be an issue. It could bend or break. So this is technically the proper way. But I have to do it because I don't have a flywheel locking pin. Now, before we do anything, we're going to want to mark the flywheel against the transmission and just mark it in a couple spots to make sure we're back to where we were and nothing changes to be safe. I did a few reference marks on the flywheel and even right there. FYI, I tried rotating the crankshaft. It was rock solid. Going after the chain tensioner bolt now. Just using a big adjustable to get it out. I believe it's a 27. Be ready with a rag underneath. Remove it and make sure that the washer comes with it. Now the chain tension is gone, but everything's locked. Now we're gonna take out the Vanos bolts. These are 16. These are one-time use. You have to order new ones every time you take them out. These are interchangeable, but I'm just gonna mark this in case. I'm gonna take this phaser and set it aside. It says exhaust, honestly, you don't have to really worry there. You want to loosen these two E8 bolts. Well, grab yourself an E10 and start moving these. So from what I understand, you want to leave these locked while you take the tension off. You got to start from the outside and work your way in on both of them. So here and here and then on the other side and work your way in, meet in the middle, take this tool off and take them out. There's a total of 29 bolts.
Okay, so I'm removing this tool now. It's not really under any tension. Hopefully that was clear. I kind of had to balance the, the pressure when removing it. So there the cam tray is removed. I'll get this set up on the table and we'll come review. So there's a pretty significant ridge in this. You can feel it with your fingernail for sure. It's probably like half a millimeter deep. So I don't know if that's too far gone or if Deflon seals would still work with these cam trays. I'll have to do some investigation. These camshafts still have the metal sealing rings. As you can see, they're just kind of gripping like that. And these are what were too aggressive for the factory cam trays and they would eat into them. I'm going to be changing the seals on the cams first. We coat them in some motor oil. When you're inserting these there's a thinner side and there's a thicker side. So I'll try to get it from the thinner side. They stretch and then they'll go back into their original position eventually when they go back in the trays. So I stuffed a little bit of grease inside the Banos passages just to help with the initial prime. I read that's a good thing to do. These rockers have to be positioned on top of the valve. You gotta make sure that they're all sitting on top. They could easily shift on you. So I'd like to state for the record that uh, it's not appropriate. You'd have to spend around four to five hundred dollars in tools to do this properly. And we're doing a workaround right now. As you're doing this, you gotta make sure you feel to see all the rockers are still sitting on top of the valves because they can shift easily. If you guys are watching this and wondering why I'm not using C-clamps, to be honest with you, unless you're going to use the proper tool from what I found, um, they just kind of get in the way. There are dowels in the corners that pull everything exactly into alignment, and there's dowels in between the two halves that make everything so that they can't really move around anyway. The point of the tool is to keep everything as one as you put them down in place, but if you're going to be doing the bolts all around to avoid spending money on additional tools, then you're better off having control to fine tune the angle of the bottom tray as you're going down to not bind anything and then drive everything down. So I'll show you how tight and smooth and how aligned everything is after the fact. The special tool is to avoid damage, but if you're very careful, I think you can get it done without it. So of course, I'm gonna recommend that you do it properly and buy the tool because if you follow this guide, you could cause damage. This is not the right way to do it, but I'm showing you how to do it without the tool if you take extreme care.
Now we torque these down to eight newton meters and followed by 60 degrees of angle. So my camera died while I was tightening the exhaust cam, but you saw what I did with the intake cam, basically draw everything into place. And I was opting to lift up on the bottom tray to pull everything up toward the top so it stays dead aligned because they're uh, aligned together via dowels. And that actually allowed me to very gently drop everything into place. So while you do this, you have to make sure that all your rocker arms stay on top of the valves. Uh, once you get things started, then they'll be locked into place. In terms of cam tray alignment to each other, they're dead perfect. You wouldn't be able to tell anything is off. You notice in there, it's dead smooth and dead perfect. And there are anchoring points on the head that they lock into. So the jig that they sell to hold things together is mostly to ensure that you don't damage anything while you install. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys that you shouldn't buy the specialty tool that they make to hold the cam trays together because that's a proper way to do things. It's kind of foolproof. But all I wanted to demonstrate here is that without any special tools, I got the job done. Using a couple C clamps in the corner could help potentially, but they mostly just get in the way. Um, unless you're gonna do the whole entire tray together, it's not gonna be much assistance. So I actually grabbed the bottom tray and pulled it up and had them stay aligned in that respect. If you notice the trays are aligned to the head in a very specific way and you can't really put it any other way. Since these are used trays, they have a bit of an oil stain here. And uh, my way of confirming that everything's good to go is the bolt hole is perfectly centered. So I'm gonna end this video here, uh, showing you how to change out your cam trays at home without any specialty tools. Um, again, I'm gonna put that disclaimer out there that yes, there's a better way to do this by the specialty tool, no chance of error, but you know, I feel like I got the job done fine here. In the next video, I'm going to be putting together my timing chains. And in that video, we'll be covering attaching the Venos system to the cams again. So if this is the first video you're catching online, please consider subscribing. I do upload regularly. Thanks for watching.